Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. A reading from Amos, the eighth chapter. Not a particularly pleasant reading, though, is it, when we hear it this morning. In fact, maybe you're even wondering, that wasn't one of our texts for today, so why would we be looking at this unpleasant reading from Amos chapter 8 at the beginning of the sermon? Well, as we look at Amos chapter 8, it helps to give us context for what was going on when we read from Nehemiah chapter 8, when we read from that, that opening of the book of the law for today. See, God had pre prepared the people in advance. He had predicted to them that if they were unfaithful, that, he would, that they would have a famine from his word, that, the, that they would become captive. In 722 B.C., the Assyrians came in and captured the northern kingdom. In 586 B.C., the southern kingdom was captured. And the rest of God's people, their life was changed forever. In 586 B.C., the Babylonians came in and they took over. The people of Israel, the people of God's promise, no longer had a land to call their own. They no longer had a name to call themselves. And for nearly 50 years, they were captive in Babylon. We now know this as the Babylonian captivity. And for fi nearly 50 years, the people of God thought that they'd been abandoned. The people of God thought that there was nothing that could happen that would go their way. For nearly 50 years, there was a famine of His Word. There was nothing for them to feast on, to grow strength and energy. Or so they thought. After that Babylonian captivity, God did rescue them. He had not forgotten His people. And He sent in the Persians to rescue them. And this is where we come to today. Nearly 400 years after Amos first made this prophecy. Nearly 400 years later, the people are opening the book of the law. And they are hearing God's promise. Not a different promise than was previously heard, but the promises that they were given from the beginning. And Nehemiah writes, And Ezra blessed Yahweh, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Now when we read these verses in English, this sounds actually very like a very good thing. These, the people of God, they had returned to Him. They were bowing their heads. They were bowed before Him. But when we look at the text, we see a little bit something more is there. When we look at that word worship, it's actually the word in Hebrew, shakah, which means to be depressed, to be sink down inside oneself. And when we co combine that with kadad, which is to bow down, literally the people, as they heard the book of the law read, their hearts were broken before God. They bowed down with their faces to the ground not merely in reverence and awe, but in brokenness and shame. And Ezra even clarifies this even further as he gives the words of encouragement. This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. The people, as they heard these words of God's law, as they heard the word of God to them, they wept because they know that it was their own unfaithfulness. It was, their, it was God's judgment on them for their unfaithfulness for those that they were in captivity for 50 years. It was God's judgment because they had strayed from His Word. And they knew this. They knew His judgment. But they also knew His grace, didn't they? They knew His grace because He did not just leave them in that land of Babylon, but He rescued them. He called them out of that land of Babylon. Now truly, I, I can't hardly imagine what it's like to have a famine of God's Word. I don't know if you can either. Think about it for just a minute, what it means to have a famine of God's Word. Can you imagine that for just a minute? To not have God's Word. To not have that treasured gift that He has given to us. I know for me, I, there's not a time I can't remember. I was raised in a Christian home where we did devotions together, where we read from the Bible and we were expected to read from the Bible. We went to a church where God's Word was read, where His Scriptures were proclaimed. And I'm sure many of you, your lives are just like mine. You can think about times as you were raised in the Word, or even if you weren't raised in the Word, that you are here today where you have heard God's Word proclaimed. For several years, several centuries, it's true the church, in a way, had a famine of God's Word. Until the Reformation, the Word was only 
was only in Latin, so people could, or Greek or Hebrew, but so the people couldn't understand it. But Martin Luther, he translated into German for the common people. And then William Tyndale, you probably don't know his name necessarily, but you know the, the Bible that came about from his work, the King James Version of the Bible. Some of you still have one. We don't have a famine from God's Word, do we? And it's hard to imagine what a famine of God's Word would be, look like. We have Bibles in front of us. You probably have Bibles, plural, at home. Even, and we heard from the Gideons last week, they're able to place thousands of Bibles everywhere. So what is a famine of God's Word? How could we imagine that? Well, as we think about it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical famine, does it? When we think about a famine of God's Word, it doesn't necessarily have to mean that we don't have a paper copy of Scripture in front of us or the ability to look at it. But rather, having that Bible in front of us and choosing not to look at it. The George Barna Group did a survey, and it was actually a, they followed the trends of Christians for the last 20 years, from 1991 to 2011. And in that, in that survey, they found that 60% of Christian adults do not read their Bible beyond Sunday morning. 60%. That means after today, only 40% of Christians in church on Sunday morning will open their Bible before next Sunday. A famine of God's Word. We have this gift of God, but we take it for granted. We have this treasure from Him, this Word that He has placed in our lives and placed in our hearts that we can freely open and freely read. And yet, and yet it sits on, there, on, the, on a shelf, get growing dust. We keep it like a precious treasure not opening it for fear of damaging one of the pages. But God intends us to use His Word. God intends us to read His Word and He intends us to open His Word. He intends us to look at it not just once a week, not just once a day, but as much as we need it, as much as we need to hear those words. And it's not merely a command, but it's a, necessary, it's a necess necessity in our lives. That Word of God that He has given to us. It is not just something that He has given to us for a show, but it is a Word that is meant to permeate our lives each and every day. To be part of our lives in what we say and what we do, whether we're in church, whether we're at work, whether we're at home, or wherever we might be. And God has promised that this is His Word of truth. It is not just a random word that some men wrote down 2,000 years ago, but this is God's Word to us. The words of the law that Moses proclaimed to the people at Mount Sinai, are the same words that we read of the law today. The words of the prophets as they inspired the people of old are the same words of prophecy that inspire our hearts today. Those words of Christ Jesus as recorded in the Holy Gospel, those are the same words of comfort that we seek to this very day. God's Word is unchanging, just as He Himself is unchanging. God is what we call um, immutable. There's a, about your $5 word for today. But immutable basically means that God doesn't change at all. That He doesn't fall into the same pro things that we do where we have emotional shifts or where we have changes in heart. God doesn't do that. God looks at us each with His compassion. And He has given us His word that doesn't change, but shows us His compassion and His love. That shows us His mercy. He uses that word in our lives to break our hearts with His law that we might know so much more richly His Gospel. He uses that Word in our lives to direct and guide us so that when we end up on the wrong paths, that you term comes. He uses that Word in our lives that when things are going terrible, when things are going awful, it gives us those words of strength and comfort. He gives us those words of joy and gladness, the reminders that all things are great gifts from Him. And as you think about God's Word in your life, as you think about how He uses it, there's another use that He uses as well. And that is as protection. So often we are led to temptation. Many of us are familiar with 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We know those words of Paul that we shall not be tempted beyond what we can bear. But so often we are tempted and so often we fall into temptation. God has given us His Word as protection against that temptation. God has given us His Word as a sword as a, of the Spirit against Satan's lies. Now Satan, he doesn't want us in God's Word. He doesn't want us in Scripture because Scripture is powerful. It is not dead and it is not, it is not forgotten. But it is live and it is well. And it is powerful. 
And it has a way to change lives. But Satan doesn't want us to do that. He doesn't want us to open the pages of Scripture because he knows the power to defeat his lies. Many of you, for example, know the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Many of you might think that that's in Scripture. It's not. In fact, in what Jesus says, it's do, do unto your enemies as you do unto your friends. Love others as, not as they love you, but as Christ has loved you first. So perhaps a better golden rule might be do unto others as Christ has done for, his, for all people. Maybe you've heard another one of those phrases that some people think come from the Bible. God helps those who help themselves. Once again, this is not a, a verse in Scripture. And in fact, this goes against God's very Word and His compassion in Scripture. Because when we look at God's Word, He doesn't say God helps those who help Himself, but He helps those who are helpless. He sends His Son, Jesus Christ, to help those who are helpless sinners. And time and again in the Psalms, He says, the widow and the orphan, they are mine. God doesn't just help those who help themselves, but thanks be to Him that He helps all of us helpless sinners. But Satan, he doesn't want us to know these, the, the truths of Scripture because we can defeat those lies then. We can face off against him, and it is powerful, and it, it cuts through those lies. It makes him impotent. It makes him helpless. It steals his power from him. And when we know those words of Scripture, when we are tempted, we can stand strong against those temptations. We can fight those temptations that Satan brings. And we can stand firmly on the words that God has given us in His paths and in His righteousness. When we look at God's Word, it is truly a treasure that He has given us. So many other books pass away. So many other books are f filled with wonderful words, flowery words, beautiful words, but, but none of them can bring the same strength and comfort that God's Word brings in our lives. And it is not meant to just be a treasure that we keep to ourselves, but it is meant to be a treasure to be shared. It is meant to be a treasure that is given to others. As we feast on this wonderful Word of God, as we, as we eat amongst those who are famished, God intends for us to also give to them, to share with them. As He has given us His Holy Word, the truth of His Scriptures, He has also given it to us to share it with others. Because there are a great many people who are not reading God's Word, who do not know the promises in His Scripture. There are a great many people who not only do not know God's Word, but have never opened it to see the truths that are there. And even among us, there are those among us, maybe it's those in our family, maybe it's those who are our friends. Maybe they've opened the Scripture once before. Because of the way life has gone, they've closed those pages and forgotten it gets easy because our lives get busy. It gets easy to say, well, I'll look at my Bible later this evening and later this evening never comes. And over time, sometimes this people forget altogether. And some of you know these folks personally. These folks who maybe they were raised in the Word of God and the truth of Scripture, but have long since forgotten them. God has given us this Word to show them that even as they have turned their back, that He is faithful. That He is faithful no matter, no matter what to each one of us. That His words, those words of forgiveness are meant for all people. For even those who have been away from the church for, for countless days. That those words of Scripture are still true for them. Those words of forgiveness. God has revealed Himself in this living, breathing, powerful Word. He has revealed Himself as Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh among us. As Jesus Christ is the living Word of God who continues to change lives each day, who continues to live in each of our hearts, to continues to give us breath that we might breathe and the assurance of our salvation. Dear friends in Christ, I know we're, we're getting late in January now. There's just a few days left. But perhaps... It's good to make one more resolution this year, at least one more. And if you're one of the 60%, which I don't know personally where you're at, but if you're one of the 60% of Christians who don't open your Bible except for Sunday morning, then I challenge you to open your Bible at least once a day. And maybe it's just to start to read with a verse or read a chapter. But I challenge you to do that. And not for my sake, not for the sake of this church, but for your sake that you might know 
the strengthening of God's Word. And for those of you who already open your Word, thanks be to God, I encourage you and I challenge you to share that Word with someone else. To share that Word with someone who you know in your life who doesn't know the promises of Scripture. Again, not for your sake, but for the sake of that person so they too might be filled and full. So they too might know the knowledge of the truth. There are far too many people who do not know the truths in God's Word. There are far too many Christians who have forgotten and long since not forgotten those words that God, Christ has given us. People of God, it's time that we fight back. It's time that we look at and we use that sword that God has given us. That we use that sword of the Spirit, His Holy Scripture, and that we fight for the truth. That we fight for what God has given us. We are not people of weakness. We are not people of fear. But we are people who have been given the true Word of God. That is truth that has abounded throughout the ages. That is truth that has gone beyond. And that is truth that will one day lead home. And it is the truth that we fight for and defend. And I pray... I pray that you hear these challenges not as my own, but as God's word to us, as his command to us to be in his word, to grow in his word, as his word to us to share in his word and to share with others so that all might know the sure assurance that Jesus Christ is Lord and that salvation is ours. Amen. Please pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, we give thanks to you for your word. We thank you, O oh Lord, that in a physical way that we do not have a famine, that we can easily get a hold of your word, whether in paper or on the Internet or any other way. We ask, O oh Lord, that we would take advantage of this wonderful treasure you have given us, that it would not just be a treasure that, grow, that gets dusty and grows old, but it is a treasure that is living and breathing in our hearts. And we pray, Lord, for your forgiveness for those times when we have taken this treasure for granted. We pray, Lord, for your forgiveness when those for those times when we have kept this treasure to ourselves and refused to share it. Help us, good Lord, to share this word, to share this love, and to share this truth with all people. Help us, Lord, to seek your paths, to seek your guidance. For as you have told us in the Psalms, your word is a light unto our path. And may that light be a light for all the ways that we walk. May that light be a, a, a light that leads us one day down the narrow path to his salvation. In all things we pray through Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. Amen.